<laughs> Shares of Fox and News Corp on the move after news that the companies are potentially exploring getting back together after splitting back in 2013. Julia Borston is here, literally. <laughs> I'm here, Welcome. not my avatar in the flesh. It's great <laughs> to be here, guys. And what's old is new again in media. Nearly a decade after splitting up his assets, Rupert Murdoch is working to recombine them, not dissimilar to CBS and Viacom's recombination into the company we now call Paramount. Now, since Fox sold its entertainment assets to Disney, Fox Corp's most valuable pieces are Fox News and Fox Sports. It has, of course, Sunday Football. Fox Broadcasting has struggled to launch some new hits, and it doesn't have a streaming service, instead relying on free ad-supported Tubi. Now, News Corp's digital subscription business and its digital real estate division have grown faster than expected. And as Fox Corp and News Corp have both established special board committees, they are now evaluating potential financial terms for a deal. It is likely to be an all-stock deal. Fox's market cap is around $16 billion. That stock is down at 21% year-to-date, while News Corp is down 26%. That's a hair more than the S&P 500 declines. The Loop Capital downgrading both stocks this morning from buy to hold, saying they, quote, believe combining the entities would be a negative for the public shareholders of each company, saying we do not see material synergy in combining both companies, nor do we believe the larger scale will move the needle for either company. Credit Suisse downgrading Fox to neutral as well, noting that Fox is increasingly facing challenges, including growing advertising recession risk and cord cutting accelerating. Also noting that the merger would not resolve Fox's need for greater video streaming scale. But recombining the two would allow for cost cutting on corporate expenses and for better cross promotion across the platforms. But those synergies may not address the fact that both companies are trading at lower valuations relative to their peers, to the larger streaming players. Guys? Yeah, Julia, also when it comes to uh, potentially or actually buying things, Kanye West, <laughs> otherwise it's known as Ye, uh, buying Parler, right? The conservative social media site, which I had forgotten about completely. Um, is this... That's a point, right? You had forgotten about it until Kanye West gets involved. I mean, you know, Jay-Z bought, you know, uh, a music streaming site, you know, it, that, this that is different. I would not, Spotify I would scale. not compare, I would not compare the two. This is very different. This is, well, I don't think Jack Dorsey is going to step in and buy out parlor. No, look, I think that uh, I just would not compare Jay-Z buying a music streaming site to Kanye West, by, may, or sorry, yay, the artist formerly known as Kanye West making a deal to buy parlor. And that's because he was kicked off of Instagram and Twitter. This was because he posted offensive, um, anti-Semitic things and therefore is now trying to find a platform which will allow him to speak. So he made this deal. Of course, we have to say who knows whether it will actually close. We don't know the financial terms of the deal. But the fact is you did forget about it because we haven't talked about it that much since it was swept into this controversy about January 6th and what role it may have played in enabling mm -hmm. people to coordinate uh, storming the Capitol. So I think that's the real question here. Will it really happen? Happen. And then if Kanye West does take over this platform, what does it become? Does it actually make it more appealing um, or is it going to remain more of a niche service? Pete Davidson probably will not be joining Parler. <laughs> that would be my guess. <laughs> of all the things that we don't know about, that I feel like I know. Good prediction. Yeah.